Hello cookies, it's Siri. I am back and today I am committing the grave sin of associating the words fast fashion with sustainability and it's not even clickbait. I am doing a hybrid post-grad traineeship education to become a sustainability specialist. So far I have completed the modules leadership and management systems, analysis, communication, laws and regulation and I am currently studying reporting. This video is not a permission or validation to purchase fast fashion. This only works for the items that you already own. Just like with video games and role playing games, we shall work on three stats, strength, dexterity and charisma to reach the secret ultimate goal. First of all, let's work on strength. When washing, prioritize the right soap. I have a special unscented detergent just for wool and sensitive fabrics. There is also another unscented one for white clothes and one for colors. I dislike fabric softeners. They destroy clothes, smell cheap, give migraines, pollute, cause allergies, and are overall a stupid waste of money. Tumblers and drying machines are super effective against fast fashion. One hit and they are KO, as I have learned from my old Shein and Zara items. Air drying them is the way. Here in Germany, all the people I have met or lived with air dry anyway. It's quite nice as an alternative to an air humidifier too. When putting clothes away, be mindful of which ones to hang and which ones to lay flat. Sweaters can become deformed if you hang them. Secondly, we have dexterity, the most satisfying stat. In French, there is an expression that says se faire pigeonner, which translates to being pigeoned or being taken for a pigeon. And that means being duped. I love pigeons, but I cannot stand when companies take me for an idiot by selling me something at a really high price and then it turns out to be lousy quality. I made a full video about the Nike shoes that I wear due to my back and knee issues. I can't stand, no pun intended, that they are the the only shoes that make walking bearable for me because I feel pigeoned by them. They are so expensive and yet fall apart quickly. Out of spite, I keep on fixing them myself so I don't have to be duped again and again. It saves me money, it does not give them money, and it's relaxing and satisfying to fix something so essential to my life. This is us playing our weekly session of badminton the day after I fixed the sneakers. I have a shoulder injury, so I could not use my dominant arm. I procrastinated fixing them for a few months because I used other shoes instead. And using these again reminded me why I love them so much, because they have adapted to my feet shape, and so they're just so freaking comfortable. In the same vein, I like fixing my clothes. They're familiar, we have a history together, and they're mine. Just like with romantic relationships or friendships, sometimes things wear down or need some mending. Unless things are irreparable, getting a new flashier and younger partner or a new cooler friend isn't always the happiest solution in the long run. I love how predictable my clothes are because we have a long history together. I know how they feel on the skin, how warm or cool they can get, how they look on camera, how suitable they are for certain occasions, and so on. Thirdly, we have charisma, which consists of elevating cheap fast fashion clothes to make them exclusive. Clothes that fit always look good, unless you're intentionally going for an oversized look. Get them tailored or tailor them yourself if it's an easy fix. My trousers have been tailored to suit my height, and I have fixed the waist area and buttons on some of them to accommodate my proportions. Being short and muscular, with a smaller waist and thicker bum and thighs, means I have to get all of my trousers tailored. Even just because of that, I don't like the hassle that comes with buying new pants. I feel confident in the ones I already have. I got this dress altered to make the waist smaller, and I gave creative freedom to the Vietnamese auntie who tailored it to 
to whatever she wanted on this area as long as it had a v-neck. My broad shoulders require a v-neck to make me look less like a square. I had to speak entirely German and to make her understand that I wanted a smaller waist but not too tight because I wanted some loose fabric still and that I wanted a v-neck not too big, not too small and that she could do whatever she wanted and she was asking me about the fabric and how I wanted the stitching here and for me that's a big win as someone who is still learning German. Even a simple brown t-shirt looks so much better when fitted. It's like Cinderella's glass slipper. That t-shirt has my exact shoulder, breast and waist measurements. It's exclusive to me. Another step that increases the charisma of any piece is to iron it or steam it. I use a steamer. A shirt can go from looking fast fashion to sophisticated just because it is now wrinkle free and falls properly on the body. A staple for pet owners is a lint roller. I have a reusable one that does not require purchasing more tape. I feel untidy and messy whenever I go out with my darker items and there's like a hair everywhere. I have noticed that coats or pants that look expensive to me on other people rarely have pet hair. They look clean and sleek. Both of the tailors that I went to in Stockholm and Berlin are women small business owners. My tailor in Stockholm, I have gone to her at least a dozen times, has invited me repeatedly to come to Afghanistan and stay with her family. I have not done the trip yet but I have really fond memories of our conversations and me dropping by and her giving me a special discount. I think she's seen a lot of changes in my life from being single, being engaged, being married, being divorced, moving out. She's just been there the whole time. And no, I don't purchase clothes all the time, but I have lost and gained weights here and there. So my clothes had to be altered again and again, or sometimes the first alteration was just a little bit off and I was just too lazy to go there straight away so I would wait a few months until I have something else that I wanted done anyway so I would go back and she would say hey how are you those three stats maxed out have increased the value of your items sustainability is comprised of economic social and environmental sustainability we tend to focus on the latter and forget the first two you have put initial money into those articles and you added either financial value by going to the tailor, emotional value by building a history with them, or time and labor value by caring for them, or all three. Your items won't end up in the landfill and since they're your own beautiful glass slippers, you don't need to consume newer ones. You save money by not purchasing new stuff. You help business owners by supporting their business and don't support poor treatment of workers by buying new fast fashion. And that's how you make fast fashion sustainable. Most of my fast fashion clothes are very, 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 very old. Some are 15 years old, some are 10 years old. I'm pretty sure that the pajamas that I use that are old t-shirts from my exes, yes, exes, multiple exes, or maybe even the same age, as me I'm not sure because they were already old when they gave them to me but they know that I like old t-shirts as pajamas the whole idea is not to throw fast fashion items because that's just such a waste I mean the damage is done the item is here I'm not going to throw it because I bought it 10 years ago or because my ex bought it 15 years ago or because someone gifted me something accidentally five years ago I will keep on using it I hope you cookies enjoy this video I am very curious to hear and read what you are thinking about all of this and people tend to get emotional I have noticed that when it comes to fast fashion and meat consumption and being child free those are the sustainability topics that get people really crazy and riled up and I always welcome conversation as long as it's respectful and as long as both parties are willing to genuinely listen to each other and I think it can be really constructive and some good stuff can come out of there I am curious to hear what you have to say cookies if you agree if you disagree if you already practice some of these if you have extra tips i am always looking for extra tips and i will see you cookies very very soon bye